Okay, everybody, here we go. Uh, you're gonna see me staring at the screen for a few minutes and everything. Um, and then you'll, you should hear me talking. There's a slight little bit of delay uh, between when I hit start and uh, what you guys see. So uh, we should be, we should be okay uh, now. And uh, I appreciate all the uh, patience and understanding. Uh, things happen when you go live and um, you just never know what's gonna what's gonna transpire, what's gonna take place and stuff. Um, I'm hoping that uh, the issue is resolved and uh, we can get through class tonight uh, and move forward. So I want to thank you very much for joining me. Tonight we're going to talk about puzzles. We're going to talk about laser engraved puzzles. We're going to talk about V carved puzzles. We're going to talk about 3D model puzzles. But we're going to talk about puzzles, making puzzle pieces, how we would do our approach uh, with those puzzle pieces and everything. And the uh, uh, we're going to actually use an outside program to help us create our puzzle parts or our puzzle uh, layout, should I say. Uh, and that program is called Inkscape, uh, inkscape.org. Inkscape uh, is a vector generating program. It's free, it's open source. And um, uh, Inkscape has a wonderful add-on or extension for uh, making uh, jigsaw puzzles. And we can, we can change uh, parameters and formats and things and, and all uh, to do so and stuff. And so we're gonna actually use uh, Inkscape to help us generate our puzzle. Uh, and then we're going to bring that into Vetric and we're going to actually going to take those vectors, that SVG file, that scalable vector file, that uh, scalable vector graphic file, should I say, that Inkscape has created for us. And um, we're going to bring it into the Vetric and then we're going to actually going to transform that into our own puzzle uh, and cut our pieces and everything to make our individual pieces and all. So uh, if the audio is repeating, most likely it's because I have two microphones on. Let's see if I can turn one of them off. Okay. Is anyone else getting repeating audio? Is anyone else getting repeating audio? Let's do a, a sound check. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Now I just said that twice. It's not repeating. <laughs> Let's see if we... Uh, all right. So we'll see how we do here. Okay. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to uh, open up a PowerPoint. Going to try to open up a PowerPoint presentation. Because it happens to have my pictures in there to give you an idea of what we're talking about. Okay. So, let's see if I can do this without messing anything up. Because if we crash again, <laughs> oh my, my, Miss American Pie. Let's see if we can open that PowerPoint here. All right, I'm not sure what's going on with your uh, video. Um, not sure what's going on with your video, uh, RW, but yeah, yeah, third time's a charm, Jim. All right, let's go ahead and switch over to our other screen. And um, let me kind of get things over there first. Okay, 
So when it comes to making our jigsaw puzzles, it's not like the older traditional approach where we would use a scroll saw or uh, you know other device bandsaw or something to cut out the parts or the pieces and things. Uh, and if we were using a scroll saw, we'd have a very thin blade to do so, you know, for our kerf and everything. We actually gotta use our router uh, to cut these parts. And um, we're gonna have a router bit, eighth inch bit, quarter inch bit. I'm gonna use a quarter inch end mill. Um, but uh, I like an eighth inch or three sixteenths uh, generally. But since I'm cutting through three quarters of an inch, uh, I'll end up using my quarter inch end mill uh, for it uh, because my eighth inch that I currently have only has a half inch flute and my three sixteenths only has a half inch flute. So my quarter inch bit is gonna be the only one that's gonna cut through. Um, but we can definitely cut out the, the puzzles and everything and we're gonna, we're gonna use our uh, CNC effectively. We're gonna use the tools that we have effectively and things and um, we're going to end up cutting those parts out. Um, and on those parts, we're going to not do any tabs. We're going to uh, nest the parts, uh, and you can do nesting uh, we're, uh, and organizing of the parts to try to minimize your waste and maximize the yield. But we're not going to do tabs. Uh, we would normally do tabs to hold pieces uh, that we're going to be cutting through, profile cuts and stuff. And... Um, we're going to uh, instead use double side tape. Uh, and now on my jigs, on my cam clamp jig or my um, wedge jig, which what you see in this image here is kind of uh, my wedge jig here. Uh, I do not use double side tape on my jig, okay? I do not want the residue of the double side tape on my waste board at all. So uh, my board, my project board that I'm cutting the parts out is double side tape to a small uh, quarter inch piece of uh, uh, plywood. And then my, uh, my jig holds everything in and all, but I'm actually double side taped uh, to plywood instead of the actual wasteboard. I don't want the residue of, uh, and I use Sure Tape, S-H-U-R-E, Sure Tape, carpet tape, basically double side tape from Lowe's. Uh, and it's, it's, it's got a little bit of a sticky residue and I don't want that on my jig. So I'm actually taking my project board to a, um, a quarter inch uh, uh, piece of plywood, birch plywood. Now, the key thing is here is when we're cutting this out, we have to give ourselves an allowance. An allowance is allowing that bit to go beyond whether we're going inside or outside away from the vector, we're giving ourselves an allowance of some sort, negative or positive, um, and we want a negative allowance. We wanna overcut our parts by a very small fraction of amount. If we don't give that allowance, then we're gonna be beating this puzzle together. The parts will not fit. And just like an inlay or things, we wanna give ourselves our pocket cut and an inlay and allowance. Well, with our puzzle pieces, we wanna overcut them. Now for me, my overcut is five thousandths of an inch, 0 .005. And um, this gives me a very nice overcut of the parts so that they fit together comfortably and I could pick up the puzzle uh, and all the pieces will hold together. They won't fall apart and things. Now, once we cut it out, we're gonna take those pieces and reassemble them and we're going to uh, then, uh, what I did is after reassembling the puzzle, I went ahead and took a blue painter's tape and I, and I, and I, I taped the whole entire back of that puzzle uh, and to kind of hold the puzzle together because, and also because I was using double side tape again, I put the blue painter's tape across the back and I put the double side tape on that. And again, I double side taped that to a quarter inch piece of plywood so that I would not be putting double side tape on my jig, on my waste board, my sacrificial layer. And uh, with that overcut, uh, and I said undercut in the little screenshot you see there, but it's an overcut. Uh, it worked perfectly at five thousandths of an inch for giving me a nice, nice fitting puzzle. And I'm simply just using pine uh, in this. Now, once I do this and I put this puzzle together, now I've created a project within Vetric of this size, and this particular puzzle is going to be 15 by 15. Um, and the um, 
15 inches by 15 inches. And so I'm going to create a project 15 inches by 15 inches. And with that project, this puzzle could be anything. I could do a laser engraving, right? Laser engrave a design on. That would be pretty cool. Uh, I could do a V carving type cut, you know, where I'm V carving some text or, or, or design or something in there. Uh, but I could also do a 3D model and turn a 3D model into a 3D puzzle. And that's what I did with this project is I did a 3D model cut. And I'm going to show you all three different looks and things. And then you can kind of determine which way you want to take it. And then, of course, you can think of other things to do with it. Heck, if we were crafty, we could decoupage, right, an actual photo to our puzzle. You know, we could modge podge or what have you. And then we could take an X-Acto knife and cut that photo following the lines of our puzzle. And we could just actually make a, a puzzle, right, a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, but what I did is I ended up doing a 3D cut. And uh, first starting out with the rough cut, and this was the scary part for me, um, but the double side tape, you know, it held firm. I never had any issue with the double side tape throughout this project. That's why I'm recommending it. Um, and, uh, but the puzzle, I thought some of the pieces, because I was using pine, select pine. I wasn't using a hardwood or anything, but I thought some of the pieces might chip or something. But no, uh, we did just fine with the cut and everything. Once the rough cut was done, then I went ahead and did the 3D cut. Uh, and these are just simple models that I pulled in to create a 3D model. And they were from the, the, uh, the uh, uh, model clip art that comes with the Vetric software. You know, Vetric, VCarb, Desktop Pro, and Aspire and everything. And um, uh, so uh, now from here, it's kind of a matter of how you want to decorate it or if you want to paint it or if you want to highlight the tone, the edges and stuff like that. Whatever you would want to do with this. Um, you know, and, um, and, and all. And so that's what we're going to make tonight. This is what we're going to make. And we're going to make some different versions. We're going to do a laser engraved puzzle. Uh, we're going to do a, not a laser cut puzzle guys, a laser engraved. We're going to laser engrave a design on our puzzle. We're still going to cut our puzzle parts out the same. Uh, we're going to do a V card type puzzle. And we're also going to do a, um, a 3d puzzle. And we'll look at, uh, we'll look at both of those options. Okay, we'll look at both of those, or all three of those options and stuff. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get in the Vetric software and uh, get started with this long-awaited class because of all the issues. Now, uh, one of the things for you guys and girls that uh, have a digital laser, if you, if you have one of our digital lasers and stuff, and you decide to do laser engraving, um, I know I don't have a whole lot of laser tutorial projects out there on the web, and we're going to do some lasering, laser tool pathing, should I say, in tonight's class. We're going to talk about that and all. But I wanted to take a minute and, um, you know, uh, let you know that I have been working. I've got a, a, a Lee Dillard, one of our customers, wonderful woman. She made a beautiful kind of plaid design, laser and gray plaid design with a V carving in it and stuff and everything. And uh, I have my version of that and all, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that in a class next week and stuff. So you might see over here on my left list here, it says Lumberjack Plaid CRV. That's an upcoming laser project for those of you that have the laser and have been asking for one. Now, let's go ahead and let's create a new file. All right, so the first thing is is we've got to, if you don't have it, we've got to get it, right? Uh, Inkscape, Inkscape, I-N-K-S-K-A-P-E, Inkscape.org. Wonderful place uh, to, it's a vector graphics editor uh, for Windows, Mac, and, and Linux and all. It's free, it's open source, it's it's really cool. It's a, it's a cool pro program and all. Uh, not much of a learning curve, a little bit, but not much, but... I only use Inkscape. I mean, I use, when, I, when I'm creating my vectors, I use my Vetric software and everything. But I use my Inkscape for the Jigsaw Puzzle extension and everything. And so basically, uh, in Inkscape, you would download it, you would install it, and then um, you would uh, uh, utilize the extension and everything in there. Now, let me see if I can open my Inkscape software without kind of leery about opening things right with everything crashing and all but <laughs> well, let me go ahead and open inkscape 
and we will uh i'll show you my uh the the, the jigsaw puzzle extension and uh we'll let that inkscape open up now in the meantime my project my project is going to be whatever size now i'm going to create a puzzle that's 15 inches along the x 15 inches along the y and three quarters of an inch thick now my entire puzzle is going to be milled off for the 3d part of this uh, project and stuff and so therefore i'm going to set my wasteboard as z0 i'm going to work off the machine bed because the entire surface is getting milled away um, and because I'm going to be using my jig to hold my parts, I'm going to work off the bottom left corner for my XY datum position, my starting position. But you can start anywhere you would like. But I would recommend working off the bottom of the material because depending on what... Now, if you're doing a V-carving type puzzle or a laser engraving type puzzle, then you should be fine and stuff. And for the first part, the first phase of this, when we're actually cutting out the parts of the puzzle... Uh, you can work off the top of the material and all. But when it comes to the actual carving and cutting of the puzzle, especially a 3D puzzle, since that entire surface is getting milled away, I recommend working off the bottom. Uh, setting your waste board as your uh, Z0. So let's go ahead and click OK. And set up our job. Now let me go ahead and pop up my Inkscape here. <clears throat> Now, Inkscape uh, is a vector uh, creating program. It's a vector editing uh, and creating program. But under its extensions, under its extensions here, uh, you have um, some very cool extensions. And under the render, we have a laser jigsaw extension. And it's designed for laser uh, cut jigsaw and everything. And so with this, we have some parameters that we can set. Now, basically, we're working kind of almost in millimeters when we're creating this and stuff. And uh, the width, uh, uh, millimeters or pixels, one of the two, however you want to look at it. Um, I believe it's pixels. But um, the uh, width and height, we can, we can uh, vary that, you know, quite a bit. Uh, the corner radius of our puzzle, we can vary that as well. Uh, the units, do we want to work in pixels? Do we want to work in inches? You know, things like that. We can actually change the units and stuff uh, with our size and all. And I'm working in pixels, and it is pixels. It is pixels, 150 by 150. Um, but um, on the outer border, I just, I've, I've never, never varied from the uh, default. Okay, and I don't check outer border. I've just never varied from the defaults here. And uh, how many pieces across? This is where you can lay out your puzzle. I could have a long, narrow puzzle. I could have a square puzzle. I could have whatever, you know, uh, whatever size puzzle I wanted. And my puzzle is five rows across, five rows high. That's going to be my 15 by 15 inch puzzle. It's a nice square puzzle. And I can size it to whatever size I want to. But it's going to be five rows across, five columns high. Okay, five five pieces across, five pieces down, however you want to say it, um, and everything. Now, when it comes to uh, notches, now, the notches, how they fit together, those notches, you know, your males and your females and everything. Um, you have a, a, a relative size, you have a grid randomization that you can do, uh, and also you have a jigsaw pattern seed. Now, as a default, the seed is one, two, three, four, five, and and I really honestly have not uh, varied off of that. I The seed needs to be consistent, whatever seed you're using, you use. And I'm using the default, one, two, three, four, five. Um, I haven't looked into uh, the instructions. And if we go to the usage and all, uh, it will explain, you know, what those different elements are and everything. You know, you can... Um, uh, you can adjust the, the, the size and randomization, uh, you know, and everything with that. And so for me, I haven't varied from the defaults on the notches page. I just keep them the same. Uh, and it creates a very nice random puzzle and everything uh, and all. So we would click apply and we could do a live preview here, but uh, not necessarily a live preview. Let's see here. 
but we could, uh, let me move this over to the side. We could click apply and see the live preview, what that does with that on is I'm making changes and things. Um, I get those changes, updates and stuff like that, you know, and I can make a long narrow puzzle and let me see if I can zoom in on this better. Bum, bum, bum. Where's my zoom? Where's my zoom? I don't think it'll let me open a tool while I'm in something here. Um, here, let me do this. Let me close this for a minute and let me zoom in. Nice and tight. And then I'll go into that render jigsaw puzzle. Okay. And uh, let's do a live preview. So it pops up the live preview. And so I could create, you know, um, all kinds of uh, parameters and everything for my puzzle, uh, whatever the case may be and stuff and all uh but for me i for my just very it's it's a kid's puzzle right there's nothing uh you know it's it's a kid's puzzle so i go five and five five pieces across five pieces down but we could really really make a lot of pieces if we wanted to um so i'm gonna go five and five okay and we could get random parts and all that stuff so five and five is what i got and then when we, um, we'll let that uh, regenerate there, buddy Roo. Uh, I'll go ahead and click apply to lock that in. And let me make sure that nothing's changed with my seed and stuff. Let's go to that live preview and kind of update that. Ooh, doggy. All right. I accidentally hit apply when I meant to make my change, ladies and gentlemen. So let's do that one more time. All right. So that's what my puzzle is going to look like. Okay. So now I can go ahead and close that and I've got this vector. So now uh, with this, when I save anything out of um, uh, Inkscape, it saves it as an SVG, scalable vector graphic, automatically. And um, let's see where that uh, is on my desktop, digital woodcarver user group assets, jigsaw puzzle, jigsaw two save. All right. So now that we've got that puzzle piece, no matter what it would be and everything, now we can go into our vetric and we can import that in and the thing here's the here's what's awesome about it okay so when i import this puzzle and let's go to our desktop uh digital woodcarver user group assets jigsaw puzzle uh jigsaw i don't care they're both the same they're actually identical okay i get this little one and a half inch by one and a half inch puzzle on my screen now my board is 15 by 15, so I'm gonna go into the size and type in 15 here, and I'm gonna click apply to size it up to my project board. Now I'm going to center, F9 for center on the screen. F9 is a keyboard shortcut for center to material. Uh, if you do not know that, you do now. Um, and here's the cool thing. This is why, this is why the Inkscape uh, program and creating the jigsaw puzzle through the Inkscape program is great because of what we need to do in the vetric. The vector lines, the horizontal lines, the vertical lines, they're all, and the boundary all around, they're all disconnected. And this is big, this is key for making this puzzle. Because right now, if we look at our puzzle, on the parts and everything that are getting cut out, if I'm gonna use my quarter inch end mill, and let me draw a 0.25 diameter end mill, okay? If I were to take my end mill and go to try to cut this part out, my bit won't fit. If the bit don't fit, <laughs> all right? So my bit will not fit, you know? It, it, it won't, you know, in some areas it will, some areas it won't. Um, and what's important is, is that it fits in all the areas when it's cutting out those parts and things. And I mean, if you look over here, 
it's not it's not going anywhere near there so it's not you know it's not going to fit so we have to offset these horizontal and vertical lines to create the radius of the diameter or the diameter should i say to create that that curve that radius it would be radius of our bit right so uh but we're going to do that very easily very easily using our offset tool so let's zoom out here and i'm going to select the entire design and i'm going to turn off i'm going to hold my shift key down and i'm going to click on my outside boundary we do not want the outside boundary selected while we're doing this okay now i'm going to open up my offset tool and if you've not really used the offset tool too much, you may not know how it operates. Okay, uh, and and let me let me explain what I mean by that. Let me create a rectangle here. Okay, and if I offset that rectangle, if I offset it outward, and I'm going to offset a quarter of an inch. Okay, I'm not going to select square corners. I'm not going to delete the original. Well, I will delete the original. Sorry, I'm going to delete the original. But when I offset this, notice what happens. My sharp corners have turned into a radius. And I offset it. If I offset it back inward, then I'm kind of back to sharp corners. Now, if I would have offset it inward first, okay, and have sharp corners, and then offset outward, I'm gonna end up with radius corners, right? Okay, you know? So what, uh, you know, that outward, inward, inward, outward uh, thing, we're gonna do here, we're gonna do it over here, uh, and we're gonna take these sharp, narrow, not sharp, but these, you know, these tight corners that you see, these tight curves and stuff, and we're gonna radii them to our bit diameter. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's select our entire design, hold down our shift key and turn off. And I, I'll, this little puzzle, this jigsaw puzzle here, I'll provide the vectors for it uh, in the group and stuff and you guys can play around with it. Or inkscape.org, download. It's a very cool graphic uh, uh, vector editing program. All right. So now I'm going to make a copy of this so you can see the differences. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to make this uh, my, oh, let's call it my original. And I'm going to make this layer, I'm going to change the color of it uh, so that um, we can, we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to move uh, my puzzle my whole puzzle, I'm gonna move it over to that original layer, okay? And, um, you know, from there, I'm gonna copy it back to layer one. I'm gonna make a copy of it. So let's turn off the uh, copy. All right, so here's my original. My original is gonna be red. If I turn that off and turn on my uh, other copy, it's gonna be black, okay? So that way we can see the difference and all. So in my uh, layer, my new layer here, we're gonna work on that, make sure it's active and all. I'm gonna select my entire design. I'm gonna hold down my shift key and I'm going to turn off the border. We don't want the border selected during this. The border doesn't change. So the first thing I'm gonna do in my offset tool is I'm gonna go outward first and then I'm gonna offset inward. And that's gonna take half of my lines, one half of my lines and radii them properly, but the other half won't be. So then I'm going to turn right around and I'm going to offset back inward again and then outward. And that will do the other half of the lines. So let's do the first step first. So outward and I'm going to type in the diameter of my router bit here. And I'm going to uh, delete the original. When I do this, I want to delete the original and I don't want sharp corners. That's the, what we're trying to prevent. So I'm going to delete the original. We're going to go outward and then we're going to offset back inward. Okay. Now, if we turn on, if we come in here and if we turn on our original layer, okay, remember our original layer is red. All right. So you can see what has happened uh, that by doing that offset outward and inward, uh, we have uh, created that 
that, uh, that new curve, that radius that our router bit can fit into. The red was the original, bit couldn't fit. Uh, the black is the new, okay? Now, but if we look here, my horizontal lines have not changed at all, okay? So there, you know, we've got to now, we've got to now, uh, or half my line, should I say, haven't changed at all. So we've got to now reverse that, all right? So let's turn off that original there and let's select everything one more time. Turning off the border, we don't want the border selected. And this time we're gonna go, once again, we're gonna go inward now and then outward. Again, deleting the original. So offset inward, offset outward. Okay, close that tool. And if I come in here and turn on my original, we can now see that all of our lines from that red and black, all of our lines and everything, all of our curves have been created. Okay, so, um, and that's what our goal is. We have to uh, create those curves that our bit can fit, you know, and stuff. All right, so now with that done, let's turn off the original. I don't need it visible, don't need it on, don't need anything. Now we have our puzzle, but we don't have our puzzle pieces. Again, these are still all individual lines. We don't have our puzzle pieces. So what we need to do is we need to select our puzzle and I'm gonna double click on it, putting it in transform mode. And if I hold my control key down, I can go ahead and make a copy. And I'm not gonna make just one copy. I'm gonna hold my control key down. Oops, let me select it again. I'm gonna hold my control key down and make a second copy. And I'm gonna put them side by side, okay? Now, I don't need what I've copied because I have my original intact. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this that's on my board because remember, I've got my original intact there, you know, unoffsetted, if you will. But what we need to do now is we need to cut, trim our puzzle pieces. So I'm gonna open up my trim tool, my interactive trim tool, my scissors, and we're going to start uh, where it doesn't matter where we start, horizontally or vertically, but we're going to make sure that we skip every other row. So for this one, I'm going to start vertically. And I'm going to start with my outside row. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and start trimming away these lines, getting rid of the entire outside row of puzzle pieces. Now I'm gonna skip a row and I'm gonna come in and trim away our lines, our puzzle pieces. I'm gonna skip a row and cut away our lines, our puzzle pieces. Okay, now since I started on the outside for this one, on this one I'm gonna start on the inside. So we'll start trimming. We're gonna skip a row. All right, now notice what just happened here. I'm gonna undo that and watch. It's gonna take both of my lines and put them back. All right, it wanted to trim both. Be careful for that. If that wants to do that, zoom in, okay? Make sure you're only removing what needs to be removed. So now, we are halfway home to creating all of our individual puzzle pieces, okay? So we've got our inside rows that were here, over here now. And so what we need to do now is we're gonna select all, uh, both of these, and we're going to double click on it to put it in transform mode. And again, I'm gonna hold my control key down and I'm gonna drag up a copy. This time we wanna keep all four copies. Now this time we are cutting horizontally, okay? So when we're cutting horizontally, we're gonna go ahead and interactively trim and I'll start with the top row, skip a row. So now you can see what's happening here 
is we, we're make, now we're making our individual puzzle pieces. Now, because as we trim, as we trim, we're rejoining those trimmed vectors automatically. So now we're creating those individual pieces and everything. So let's go ahead and finish that up. Okay. And so <clears throat> now that I've uh, here started kind of on the top row and skipped, I'm going to start on the second row down here. Skip a row. Okay. Same thing over here. We're going to go ahead and I'll start with the top row. Skip a row. And skip a row again. And then down here, since I trimmed away the top row and all, I will start on the second row. And I'll skip a row. Okay, you're, you're, you're trimming every other row horizontally and vertically. And guys and girls, it is rinse and repeat. This process is rinse and repeat. These steps for any single, every single puzzle that you would do, this is what you're going to do. So now we have all of our puzzle pieces. And if you want confirmation that we have all of our puzzle pieces, let's go ahead and I'm going to take these four and group them together. I'm going to take these six and group them together. And I'm using the group button or the G key, the keyboard shortcut, uh, uh, is for group and U for ungroup. I'm using the G. So I'm selecting my part and hitting the letter G to group together. All right. <clears throat> All right, so if I take my puzzles here, if I grab this puzzle here, and I'm gonna grab it by this corner and I'm going to snap it into place. Okay, this puzzle here, I'm gonna grab, well, let's put the middle one in. Grab it right about there. And we'll snap that into place. And then I'll grab this guy here on this corner of this piece and I'll snap it into place. And as you can see, we have our entire puzzle made. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to ungroup all of these parts. Okay, we want individual parts. But these are all closed vectors. They're all individual and everything. Uh, but that's how we make our puzzle pieces. So now we've got our puzzle pieces now we need to cut them out. Well, here's the thing. Um, I'm not going to cut them out of a 15 inch by 15 inch board, right? I can't run down to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy a 15 inch wide board. I'm going to most likely cut them out of a one by six or a one by eight or a one by 12 or something. You know, I'm going to cut them out of a, a board that I could readily pick up at a, at a hardware store or something where, you know, wherever I'm getting my material. It's not going to be a 15 by 15 inch piece. That's what my puzzle size is. That's what my puzzle is going to be and everything. So I'm going to come back now that I've made my puzzle pieces and everything. I'm going to come back to my job setup and I'm going to change my job dimensions to the actual part that I'm going to be cutting these pieces out of. And for me, I'm most likely going to cut them out of a uh, 24 inch wide by uh, 11 and a quarter in, or 24 inch long. I said wide. I don't know why, but, uh, um, but by 11 and a quarter inch wide board, that's three quarters of an inch thick. I'm going to go buy a one by 12. And that's what I did. I bought a one by 12 piece of pine so I can make a bunch of puzzles, you know. Uh, still, again, um, with this one, we're cutting parts out. And we can work off the top of the board or the bottom. But again, my, my puzzle, even though it's double-sided tape to a piece of quarter-inch birch plywood, uh, so I don't get residue on my wasteboard and stuff, I'm still going to work off uh, the uh, bottom of the material. But I've got to account for that quarter-inch board that I'm double-sided taped to. So since I'm... Since that board, that waste board that I'm cutting through is actually, or that, that, that piece of plywood is actually kind of like the waste board and it's not my actual waste board, you know, I'm going to go ahead and for this one, I'm going to reference off the top and I'm going to, uh, you know, cut into that, that a little bit. But if I was using, if I was double sided state traits to my, my sacrificial layer and everything, I don't want to cut into my sacrificial layer. So I always work off the bottom of the material. Um, 
but we can do either or. We just have to remember, okay, we have to remember if we're working off this and if you do double side tape it to some kind of, you know, piece of plywood or something so you don't get sticky stuff all over your thing, you kind of have to uh, account for that in the thickness, you know? You gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta account for that um, and, and stuff. So, uh, I don't want this to be overly confusing as to, okay, why is he changing his thickness and all that? Because you might not use that quarter inch piece of birch plywood to double side tape to, you know what I mean? So what I'll do for this one is I'm going to work off the material surface, but I'm still working off the bottom left corner because it's on my jig. So let's go ahead and click OK. All right, so now I've got my actual board size that I'm going to be cutting these parts out of, and I've got my parts here. Well, now I need to nest them. Nest them is a form of taking multiple parts and organizing them on the material in a way that... Um, I minimize my waste and maximize my yield. But now I need you to understand something. When we take these parts and we nest them, it's going to rotate and twist the parts depending on the angle that we choose. And I like the pattern that it creates when we do that. It, it creates a random grain pattern. So not all the grain is running consistently. I feel that if the grain is running consistently in my puzzle, it makes the puzzle too easy to put together. You know, not only do I have my actual object that's getting put together, but now I have grain helping kind of assemble that and all. So I don't mind that my grain pattern is randomized and everything. Um, and so I use the nesting tool. But if you want this, the grain to run in the same directions, you're either going to have to um, one by one, place these parts on your board and position them so that the grain is running together. This is how they're orientated. That's how the puzzle is. So I'd have to bring them down one by one because if I use my nesting tool, whether I'm doing a zero angle or a 45 degree angle for the, you know, the twist and turn for them to fit, it's going to turn 90 degrees, zero, 90 degrees, you know, type of deal and everything. Um, and, uh, you know, if I didn't want that and I wanted my grain running consistently, I would manually place these on my board. Okay. So for me, I'm going to be using with my nesting tool here, I'm going to be using a quarter inch diameter bit to cut out my parts. I want a clearance only, only of about seven thousandths of an inch. Now let me talk to you about the clearance. Okay. And the diameter of the bit. Okay. So Let's, let's see if we can draw this out. Let me see if I can draw this out. I have two parts here. And let me draw my bit. This is not real size, but you'll get it. Now, in the nesting tool, you have the diameter of your bit that's taken into account, and then the clearance. The clearance is the distance between the outside diameter of that bit and the next piece. Okay? My bit will fit in between both parts and cut both parts out because they are double sided tape and everything, so I don't need that much clearance. I don't, I don't want a whole lot of clearance and everything. So what I'm going to end up doing is I've got a small seven thousandths of an inch clearance that are going to, so my parts will stack tighter together because my bit will still cut out both parts, you know, but I don't need that much clearance between them. I just need enough for the diameter of my bit, less a little bit more. Okay. So I'm using a, oops, wrong tool. I'm using a seven thousandths of an inch clearance. Okay. Now my border gap, how far I want these pieces away from the sides of my board. Do I want any border gap at all? Uh, things like that. And so for me, I do want a border gap. Okay. 
All right. So now Bear with me a second. Get back to y'all. All right. So I want a six I want a, uh, about a 16th of an inch. Okay? Now um if if you want it to be further away, if you want it to be tighter, you know, all that stuff. If you're not using a wedge jig or your low profile jig or something, like you're using clamps, uh, then have your parts further away from your edge or or place your clamp somewhere where those parts don't fall. Right? With me, I have a wedge jig that's holding, you know, uh, the part and everything off to the it's holding from the side. It's clamping from the side. There's no mechanical clamps on the top of the part. So um I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be a 16th of an inch. Now I want these parts, I'm going to allow it to rotate these parts for best fit up to about a 45 degree angle. I do not want to mirror the parts. Sometimes you mirror the parts for best fit, but I don't want to because I don't want, you know, sometimes you have a good piece of the board, you know, and a nice looking side. Sometimes you have a not so nice looking side. And uh, so I want to keep all my parts orientated top, top, you know, I don't want them mirroring. You know, and stuff. So I don't want a mirror. And I don't have any room inside of these parts. I don't have any waste area inside of these parts that I could cut another part out. So I can't allow the parts inside other parts. You know, if I had some waste area, and an example of that would be, let's say that on my rectangle here, that I was cutting out a narrow strip that would look something like this, you know, and I'm, and I'm, let's make that actually look realistic there. Let's say I'm cutting out this frame here and all of this middle area is waste area, right? Uh, it's not going to be used for anything. It's just going to be cut out. Well, then I can allow parts inside of other parts because these two would be grouped together as one part. And so I have all that waste area that other parts could be placed to minimize my waste, you know? And in this case, we don't have that. So we can't fit other parts inside there. So I don't, I don't want that checked. All right, so I'm gonna grab all of my puzzle pieces and I'm gonna go ahead with my settings and I want to nest from the bottom left corner of my board outward and everything along my X axis. So we'll go ahead and preview All right, and so here's all my parts. Now, when you do nesting, when you do nesting and everything, <clears throat> your nesting, if your parts take up more than one sheet, it will create additional sheets. Notice how this says sheet two right here, okay? So I have sheet one and sheet two. It's gonna take two sheets to cut this part out. So over here in my nesting tool, I have active sheet one, and I also have active sheet two, okay? My two separate sheets. And to get to those sheets, I can't click on active sheet two. I can't do anything with it right now. I can't select it and do anything until I make it active, okay? Then I can select and all that stuff. So what we're gonna do now is we're ready to create our tool pass. And um, resorter, I'll get I'll get right there with you. Give me one second. Let me switch over to the tool pass side here. Let's take a pause for a moment and answer a question. Uh, so how do you get the tool to start on the top of the board? The tool is always going to start from the top down, right? It's, it's never going to cut from the bottom up. It's always going to start from the top down. And regardless, let let a lot of people let's let's talk about this just a little bit because a lot of people get this get, get really confused on this and everything ever since i talk about you know touching off on the waste board and all that stuff uh people get confused so let's let's do this <clears throat> all right so Let's, let's assume that this is my router, okay? Now, I can either set my Z 
zero for the top of my material or for the bottom of my material, which is referred to as the machine bed in the software. Okay, now let's make this more realistic because my, my bit would be a lot clearer than that. So there we go. Okay, now if I'm starting and zero it out on the top of the material, that's my zero. When I'm in here and I'm cutting and everything and I set my cut depth to an eighth of an inch, it's going to cut from zero down to that eighth of an inch, right? And on my home start position, my home start position, that 0.8 when I start, when I hit that start button, it's going to make sure the router's at home, X, Y, zero, but it's going to raise that bit up to 0.8. So I'm zeroed out. I hit the start button. My machine is going to raise up to 0.8 before it goes over and starts carving to whatever depth it's going to carve to. Okay. But now let's say that I set my Z zero at the bottom. Okay. And I set my machine bed at the bottom. Well, now nothing's really changed in here, right? My home start position is still x0, y0, z.8. However, however, if we can zoom in, if you can see this right here, notice my home position says x. 0, Y, 0, Z, 1.55. Well, wait a minute. I thought my home position was 0.8. Well, let's go back and actually look at what it says. The home position Z gap is the Z gap above the material that we're cutting. So what that means is, is the software takes into account the thickness of my material, my three quarters of an inch. And it not only raises that three quarters of an inch, but it raises to my home position above the material to my 0.8 before the router turns on. Comes over, starts its cutting. And if I was cutting through, it cuts down from three quarters down to zero. If I'm working off the top, it cuts from zero to three quarters. Okay. Now here's the thing. You don't get just only the benefit of working off the bottom of the material because you are um, uh, just kind of saving your sacrificial board from getting cut into and stuff. Here's, here's another reason. Let's say that I go in here and I create a profile cut to three quarters of an inch deep from zero to three quarters, okay? And I'm working off the top of my material. My top of my material is Z zero, right? So I calculate this tool path and everything. Well, my material, I touch off, this is zero. This is home, the top of my material is home, zero. So when that router, when I hit start and all, it's gonna cut through the steps and everything and it's gonna eventually cut down to three quarters of an inch. But what happens if my material is slightly larger than three quarters of an inch, 0 0.8, 0 0.85, 0 0.8, 0 0.76, right? You know, then I'm cutting from the top of my board, zero down to three quarters. And what do I end up with? That little onion peel skin or that skin where it just doesn't quite cut all the way through, right? So then what do I have to do? Oh, I got to go into my profile toolpath and I have to type in 0.77 just to get it to go down that extra 20 thousandths of an inch, you know, just to get it to cut through. I go to cut it again and I'll be doggone, it's almost there, but it's not quite there. So I got to come back in here and go 0.78 and all right, finally cut through, right? Type of deal. Or think about the opposite. What if my board is slightly under three quarters and the top of my board is zero and my cut depth is three quarters of an inch. Now I'm cutting from zero down to three quarters and I end up cutting into my waste board. I'm spoiling my spoil board. 
because that material, I programmed it in for three quarters of an inch of a cut, but it wasn't quite three quarters, 0 0.72, 0 0.73, 0 0.68, 0 0.74, whatever the case may be. Now I'm cutting, because my machine's going from zero, the top of my board, down three quarters of an inch. And if my board's not three quarters, if it's a little thinner, then that means I'm cutting into my spoil board. Okay? Well, let's look at it the opposite way. Now I'm going to set my Z0 from the bottom. Okay? The bottom of my board is zero. And the software has already taken into account the thickness of my material, three quarters of an inch, and then my home start position, 0.8. So when I hit start, it's automatically going to raise up above my material. It's always going to clear my material. I'm never worried about that. It's going to clear my material because of my home start position. My safe Z height, my Z clearance at all is 0.8 above the material. Not above my zero, above the material. And now let's say my border's three quarters of an inch, right? I'm cutting. When I set my cut depth, I still, nothing changes for me. I still am cutting from zero to three quarters of an inch. The software does all of the reversal. It knows that I'm working off the bottom instead of the top. So when I calculate this toolpath, the software automatically sets it to cut from three quarters down to zero because I'm working on the bottom. So it goes from three quarters down to zero and never below zero. So it's not gonna cut into my waste board, right? So if, 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 my, if my waste board is zero, right, it's never going to cut below zero. If my board is slightly oversized, right, my router still raising up, still got plenty of clearance to clear it and everything. Now, because my board's a little bit thicker, that first pass depth is going to be a little bit deeper than that eighth of an inch I set, you know, because, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's a little bit thicker than three quarters. So, uh, you know, it's, it's starting at three quarters, whatever it is. But when it cuts down to zero, it cuts at zero, never below. So it's just kissing the waste board, not spoiling it. In opposite to that, if my board, and I'm always cutting through my material, if it was a little thicker, it's still cutting down to zero, still cutting all the way through. No little onion skins, none of that stuff. Let's say my board's a little bit thinner than three quarters. Okay, so... I'm still, when I hit start, it's still raising up to that 0.8, you know, above my board. And when it cuts, if it's a little shy of three quarters, I might be cutting air, right? Or if, I, if my cut is an eighth of an inch deep past depth, I might be a little shy. I might be, you know, a few thousand shy of that eighth of an inch or something, you know, depending on how thin my board actually was. But no matter what, it's still cutting through to zero, never below, only kissing the top of my spoil board. So I'm guaranteed if my board's a little thick, a little thin, just on target, I'm going to always cut through it by working off the bottom of the material. And secondly, I'm not going to spoil my spoil board. I hope that long explanation helped clear things up. Now, back to our puzzle. James, excellent question. You do not need to change any values or anything in Planet CNC, in Vetric, nothing. Nothing for you changes. When you're still setting your cut depths from zero to an eighth of an inch, from zero to a half inch, from zero to three quarters, whatever it is, you're still setting your cut depths normally. Okay? The software in the back side of things reverses all that stuff. All right? Let me show you what I mean. One last little example here. So I'm going to set my material up to work off the top of the material surface. And I'm going to create a profile toolpath. And I'm going to go for a cut depth of 0 0.25, 0 to 0.25. And uh, I'm going to use my 60 degree V bit. Uh, well, well let's, do, let's do an end mill so you can kind of see. We'll do an end mill. All right. My end mill is set to take, I think, eighth of an inch passes. Uh, let's look and confirm that. That's true. So we're going to calculate this out. No suitable vector selected. Let me grab this puzzle piece right here. We're going to calculate that out. All right. Now let's save that toolpath. And I'm doing this, uh, I'm using the digital woodcarver inch so it creates line items. So you can see this, not radiuses with the helical arcs. So uh, let's save this toolpath and we're going to show uh, 
top of material save all right I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna change this now to the bottom of my material and I'm gonna recalculate that toolpath okay and now I'm going to save that toolpath and we'll call this bottom of material all right so let's go ahead and open this up. Let's go into here, bottom of material, and let's move that aside, top of material. Okay. Okie dokie. All right. So now let's look at the first few lines. Okay. First thing is when I hit start, G0, Z, 0.8. This is the top of the material, right? So I'm raising up 0.8 of an inch. G0, Z, 1.55. Working off the bottom of the material. It's going to raise up my 3 quarter inch board and then that 0.8 of an inch for a total of 0.155. Okay? All right, right here. G0, Z, negative 0.125. This is my first pass, my first cut. Working off the top of the material. G0Z, 0.625. 3 quarters of an inch minus an eighth is 5 eighths, 0.625. Okay. Second line, or the second Z after it does its cut and everything. Let me get to that second pass depth. Maybe, 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 maybe. Here, let's do this. Edit find Z oops let me go back up up okay so let's move this out of the way all right so that first pass, negative 0.125, this is the top of the material. Second pass, negative 0.25, bottom, you know, cutting, you know, uh, down to my quarter inch deep, right? And then it's going to raise up, raise up home, and then it's going to go back home at the end of the job in 30 turn off, okay? Now here, this is the bottom of the material. Let's find... Z. Let's move this over here and all right. So my first pass, it's gonna raise up, right? 1.55. It's gonna go down that eighth of an inch, which is to 0 0.625 from three quarters. And then the next one. Oops, going in the wrong direction. Let's go down. Alright. That next pass, that next eighth of an inch, 0 0.625 down to 0 0.5 right so it does all of that you don't have to do anything you set your cut normal <clears throat> okay all right all right all right all right okay now let's get back to our puzzle because this is a long class already all right so for uh sheet number one it's going to take two sheets to cut all these puzzles out uh for sheet number one Uh, Tippy, you could go home if you use the bed of zero, but not really. Uh, you and your planet CNC, you're going to go to XY zero. If you go to XYZ zero, make sure that, uh, you know, go to, uh, if you want to go to Z zero, make sure, not, not XY. If you want to go to Z zero, make sure that there's no board there, right? Or else what are we going to do? We're going to plunge the bit through the board. Now, Tippy, you knew that. Right? Right. So you use the button in the TNG software that's go to selected Y, go to selected XY, zero, right? Go to zero XY. That button on the left, XY with a circle around it. And it'll bring your router back home, but don't go to Z zero. Don't click the dot, the, bu the button above it, you know, which is go to zero XY and Z. We don't want that. All right, just go to zero XY. I can always bring my router home, 
but I'm not going to bring it to Z home, just X, Y home. All right? Cool. All right. All right. All right, so let's select all of our parts here. Now, remember on this, uh, we're going to cut through three quarters of an inch. That's why we're cutting all the way through these parts out and everything. I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill, and I want to be on the outside of the line. Okay? Very important here. This is where the allowance comes in. If you don't see the allowance, check off the show advanced tool options so you can see those advanced tool options and things in here. So for our allowance, for our allowance, we got to give ourselves a little bit of an overcut so these parts fit together. And so for our allowance, um, we're going to go to the 0.005 but not to the positive direction. We need to go to the negative direction, 0 0.005. We need to overcut the parts, negative 0 0.005, five thousandths of an inch. Now, you can use any overcut you want. This is just the number that works well for me, okay? So I'm gonna calculate this tool path and you know we can see our parts. Now, there's no tabs, right? We got double-sided tape holding these parts in and everything. So we can get rid of our waste material, you know, and stuff um, oops not that one but uh, you know we've got our parts and all here all cut out and stuff but now let's go to the 2d view and let's look at the actual tool path so let's come in here and let's click on our check on our tool path and what you're seeing is a wireframe view of that tool path showing where the center of the bit is cutting and the direction of the cut well, let's take and turn wireframe into solid. Well, let's toggle between a wireframe view and the solid view. And this is gonna show where the whole entire diameter of the bit is cutting. And if we zoom in ever so tightly, you can see that that bit is just overcutting that vector by that five thousandths of an inch, that nice little overcut on the part so everything fits together snug as a bug in a rug, right? Okay, if I were to use a positive offset, what do you think? All right, if I were to use a positive offset, then I'm positive away from the line. All right, I'm now, now they won't fit together at all. Make sure it's a negative, guys. When you're cutting on the outside of the line, you want to cut over the line, over cut apart. It's a negative number. Okay, so let's calculate that. All right, so now this is going to be sheet one, you know, and uh, with sheet one done, we now come out here. Let's turn off that toolpath, and we're going to go open our nesting tool back up, and we're going to make sheet two active. We're going to select all of them, and we're going to create our profile toolpath for those. Same parameters. Make sure you type in your allowance because it doesn't stay in there, and then calculate that toolpath. All right, to cut out that second sheet. Okay, all right, <clears throat> now let's go ahead, uh, let's go ahead and um, now we've got our, we got our tool pass, right? We've got our tool pass and everything here. We've got our puzzle pieces and everything cut out and all that stuff. And so now all we need to do, let me, by the way, let me get rid of, um, this part here so that's not confusing you by the way to get to that default sheet and everything if you did have parts out in the field or something for some reason you need to select them that's uh active sheet zero your default sheet right okay then we have one and two you know what i mean all right so now i've got my parts all cut out and everything and I could do this all in the same program, right? I could just go through, I've got my two tool paths, I could change my job setup to my 15, back to my 15 inch by 15 inch and all that. But in case that confuses you or in case you decide to hit the button to recalculate all tool paths, it's gonna screw things up. We are going to do the smart thing and we're going to just simply open up a second instance of the software. And I'm using Vetric VCAR Pro. And um, this can be done in Desktop Pro and Aspire, guys. All right, so uh, 15 inch by 15 inch. Now my puzzle is going to get put back together. I'm actually carving on the puzzle. So uh, 15 inch by 15 inch by three quarters. I'm going to be milling the entire surface away, so I will be working off of the machine bed, off of my waste board. 
We're not going to go through that explanation again. We just did. And I will be working off the bottom left corner because my jig references off that corner. And I'll most likely be using my quick set block. So let's go ahead and click OK. And now we're all set up here. All right. Now we have our puzzle. OK. Now, here's the thing. All right. If you wanted, for some reason, your puzzle lines and everything, your vectors and all to be visible while you're uh, drawing, which they don't have to be, guys. But if you did, if you just wanted to see where things fell, you know, uh, for whatever reason, you could do that. You'd go back into your other Vectric program. You'd come back in and you'd go into your, let's go to our default layer in our nesting tool to layer zero. And we'd come back in here and turn on our original. We would uh, come in and copy that. Copy. Copy text. Copy. And we could come over to our new design and we could paste. Right? This is the original. Unoffsetted. Right? Right. So, what do we do? Turn off the border. Quarter of an inch. Offset outward first. Delete the original. Offset outward. Bam. Offset inward. Bam. Once again, offset inward. Bam. Offset outward. Bam. Okay? All right. All right. All right. Okay. Rinse and repeat. So now we have our puzzle visible. Okay? And if you wanted to, you could uh, you could set that. So now if I wanted this and I didn't I want to draw it, but I don't want to have to, these lines being selected and all that stuff, then what am I going to do? I'm going to lock lock that layer. What that means is, is I can't select that layer. Right? I can't select anything on there. So if I'm drawing, right? Let's say I'm, you know, hello, hello, world type of deal. Let's go bold. Let's go, uh, let's go big and bold and All right, I could work with my vectors. I could do what have you. Now, that red is obnoxious, right? Oh my goodness, it's obnoxious, right? It's like in the way. So let's, let's, let's tone this down a bit. Let's come with a, like a, a very light gray, right? Something like that. Very light gray, so it's not so in your face. You can still see where things fall and all that stuff if you want to. Again, not necessary, not sure, but you know, some people might want to see where their cut lines fall and all that stuff and blah, blah, blah. And if you did, that that's fine, you know. But lock it so it's not, it can't be clicked on, it can't be checked, it can't be nothing like that and all, and you can work and it's not going to be like selecting your, your puzzle pieces every time you try to click on something to work with it, okay? All right, so we locked the original layer. There's a little padlock on there. You see a little padlock right there? All right. Okay. So, let's say, what say you? Um, what say you? Let's say, hello world, it's kind of boring. Let's go to, an image <clears throat> and let's go to my downloads all right let's zoom into this bad boy and uh, let's trace this image so let's uh, turn the fading off so we can see it <clears throat> preview apply ah don't preview <clears throat> make sure you're uh, make sure you're working in your uh, correct layer 
not your original layer. Don't be, don't be previewing and all that stuff. Preview means it's drawing. We want our original layer drawn. All right. So apply, close, and then we can get rid of that picture. All right. So now we can come in here and let me size this bad boy up. Hold your shift key to keep it centered. Whatever it may be. This would have been a good project for Valentine's Day. An I love you heart puzzle. <laughs> All right. Now, I'd have my puzzle at this point. I would have it assembled together. I would have blue painter's tape on the back, you know, to hold the part, the pieces together and all and stuff. And then I would have this double side taped to my uh, sacrificial. I'm using plywood, you know, for this. I don't want double side tape on my wasteboard and all that stuff. Um, and, um, and all that stuff. But uh, I want... Um, to have it together because I'm actually going to carve on it. You know what I mean? And if I'm going to paint this, right? Let's say I'm going to paint the heart that I'm carving out and stuff. We would still use our aura mask, right? Just like normal. We'd still use our aura mask uh, that we would use if we were if we were painting or, you know, what, what have you. You know, whatever you usually normally do. Nothing's changed. You're just, your board happens to be, you know, 15 different puzzle pieces <laughs> instead of a board, right? So we create our V-carve toolpath, uh, and I'm not going to go any flat depth on this. I'm going to calculate this toolpath with my 60 degree V-bit. I have one open vector. That's fine. Um, it's a little dot. I know exactly what it is. It's a little dot somewhere. And we're going to calculate that toolpath, and then I'm going to preview that cut. You know, and uh, you know we'd have our puzzle. Now. Let me go through and uh, let me take and turn on my, unlock my original layer, right? Turn my original layer on for a second. And I'll select my puzzle pieces. Did I have it? I still got it locked. Let me unlock it. Let me unlock it. All right, and I'm going to create just now. This is just for preview purposes only, guys. This is for preview purposes only. Uh, you wouldn't do this, uh, but profile toolpath. Uh, I'm going to go like uh, ten thousandths of an inch deep. 0.01. Uh, I'm going to use my V bit. It's about the best I can do, and uh, I could probably even use my laser tool. But uh, we'll calculate this on the line. Preview that. What? You better. Weirdo. Oh, got to add some color to it because it's only ten thousandths of an inch. Let me go a little bit deeper. <laughs> Let's go uh, point oh da -da 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 two. There we go. All right, so let's uh, let's create our heart. You know, so imagine, you know, uh, you could do a laser engraving puzzle, right? Where the whole thing is laser engraved, some type of nice, you know, whatever. Uh, you could do a V carving puzzle and you could do a 3D model puzzle. And that's what we're going to do. This is we're going to close out with a 3D model puzzle. But you kind of get the concept with this, right? We could we, we could do whatever we want. Now, if we were doing a laser engraving, OK, if I was laser engraving this, that is a, if I want to follow the line, if I want to outline this, it's a profile toolpath. If I want to engrave this between the lines, almost like it looks now, V-carved, right? 
then that is a pocket cut. And I want to engrave this. All right, I want to engrave this. So I'm going to uh, use a pocket cut for this. Let's go to our 2D view. Let's turn that original off. I'm going to lock it again. <clears throat> Let's go back into layer one. All right, so now I'm going to take my design and my cut depth is zero when I'm calculating this toolpath to save, to run with the digital laser. Cut depth is zero because we don't want the laser moving. It's going to stay where we zero it out, okay? But for preview purposes, I need to be able to see the preview. And if we do a zero cut depth, we're not going to be able to see it. So for preview purposes only, I'm going to set this to like a 0 0.02, 0 0.03, whatever the you know, case may be. Um, and I'm going to hit select and I'm going to go to my digital laser tool. And for this, I'm going to do a raster cut. And I like working at a 45 degree angle. This gives me a nice looking cut. Now, my laser settings for any of you that have the digital laser tool, as a default, 0 0.005 for the diameter. 0 0.01 for the pass depth. The percentage actually should be 40%. Between 40 and 80. 80 is not bad. Um, but 40 and 80. We'll, we'll, let's, we'll, we'll look at both and we'll see which one looks better. Uh, for the spindle speed, 8. That's the power. The spindle speed controls the power of the laser. So that would be an 8. And then for the feed rate, 45. And the plunge rate, 15. You know, I want a nice engraving. If I slowed it down, it'd be a little bit deeper and all that stuff. But, so that's my default settings for the digital laser tool. So let's go ahead and 45 degree angle, raster cut. We're going to calculate this toolpath. We still have that one open vector. We'll find that annoying little sucker in a moment and get rid of it. It's just a little dot um, or a little line, should I say. let it calculate now it's calculating a 45 degree angle this five thousandths of an inch tool you might get some buffering you might get some buffering while it's calculating this sucker forget any buffering i won't crash i promise we made it this far and while that's calculating i'm gonna take a sip of my nasty old mountain dew i like well if mountain dew's listening i love mountain dew right need a sponsor but uh, no I'm out of Dr. Pepper so I had to drink Mountain Dew and I knew it was gonna be a bad day when I had to switch to Mountain Dew and for all you Mountain Dew fans out there don't unsubscribe just because I said that I'm only teasing I love both you know I love both I love both Well, I believe it's calculating. Well, while it's calculating, let it calculate out for a second. Do you guys and girls have any questions so far up to this point? And then we're going to create our 3D model puzzle uh, and everything. I just want to let this calculate for the laser engraving. Uh, and this is typical. This, 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 would, this would be typical. Uh, you know, it kind of pausing all, especially that five thousandths of an inch tip uh, stepping over. You know, it's creating a lot of lines of tool pass right now uh, at a 45 degree angle. And that's a small, this is a small design. So that laser is moving back and forth, back and forth and all. So it's creating a lot of lines, millions of lines right now. Millions of lines. So it's going to take a moment. Um, but any questions, ask them now. And Tippy, you know, like you said, I was reading this, you know, you like to go home, right? Uh, after each zeroing and stuff. And that's fine. Go to XY0, verify, you know, you can bring it right down, verify XY0, and then move off your board and go to Z0. And you do that by just moving over. And in your MDI box, your manual data input, just type in Z0 and hit enter. And it'll bring it right down to zero. Manual data input box is on the right side of the TNG software. So, 
I don't want to tax myself too much by opening too many programs. <laughs> uh. We're buffering now. All right, let me see if I can open up my TNG without uh, without issue. <clears throat> now, ladies and gentlemen, that do not have. Um, Planet CNC TNG, whatever control you're using and stuff, I'm sure somewhere, somehow, there is an MDI box. And I'm going to minimize this, uh, you know, uh, a little bit so we can so take up screen here. But uh, that MDI box is over here, Tippy. So let's say that I, I, I you know, I, I'm zeroed out, right? Or I want to go to zero. I'm going to bring my router to XY zero. Okay. XY, that's that button right there. I'm going to bring it home. I'm going to validate that it's home, okay? And then I'm going to end up moving my router over off of my board. And then I'm going to come over here to my MDI box and I'm going to type in Z0 and I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to bring the router to zero. Z0. Z0, enter, right? Okay, it's going to bring it out to zero. Now, anything that you type in here and all, uh, you can type in, like, see that X? Like, let's say if I wanted to bring the X home. Well, first off, right, I'm sitting on my Z0, so let me raise my Z up. Not that high, but you know what I mean. And I could go X0, enter, bring my X home. I could go Y5, move my Y to 5 inches. So that manual data input box, you know, X or that manual data input box is uh, you know there for you know manually typing in data and now I want to bring everything home let's say I wasn't working off the bottom of my material right 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 and I said X zero Y zero Z zero and hit enter it's gonna bring all three of my axes home so that MDI box you know you can use that to move and manually type in where you want your router to go right from zero everything's from zero okay so that means is, uh, what I, when I say from zero, that means is, um, let me raise that Z up, Z up one inch. All right, let's say that I want to move my X uh, to uh, five, right? And I'm, I'm already sitting, let's go to X four first. All right, let's say I'm sitting at, at four inches and um, I want to move to five inches. I wouldn't type in X one, right? Four plus one is five type of deal. I would type in X5 because everything is referencing from zero. So X5 and that'll move me over that one inch to five inches type of deal. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So <clears throat> that kind of deal. All right. Let me figure out. I'm going to close this up and let me see. Let me see what's, um, uh, what's happening with my. Vetric software here. I think I, I think I traumatized it. I believe I traumatized it. So while we're going on, let's uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, Keith, hook me up with a laser. <laughs> Wish I could, buddy. Uh, hey. Eight eight forty nine, you know, I can give it to you for seven ninety nine, right? Eight forty nine is the new price. Uh, let's see here, um, Jim. Looks like you could use the Inkscape puzzle to create the picture frame puzzle you covered last time. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Sure could. Absolutely. There would be a way to do that, but you got to keep something in mind um, that we could. Uh, true statement but um, we want to make sure that that puzzle part right normally we, we take that puzzle part and we multiply whatever 
that no matter what, it kind of fits in no matter which way we turn it. That puzzle's kind of created no matter what angle, if it's sitting horizontally or vertically, it all the pieces fit, right? So yeah, you could do that with the Inkscape puzzle uh, maker on those that piece or part, for sure. For sure in the score ago. Lord have mercy, what did I do to my... This is not typical guys of uh, adventure. This is me. Um, I'm having serious computer issues tonight. Let me see if I can free up some. I don't know what's going on, but as long as it's not buffering. Um, Todd, it's only a real problem when your material is thicker than you told it is. It's only a problem when your material is thicker than you told it it is. What's a problem, Todd? Uh, you mean like cutting through? It's only a problem when your material is thicker than you told it is do help uh todd elaborate on that one bud um are you referring to the the the, the, the touch off thing again or is it something different i don't know what i've done to my venture let's go ahead and open up another window and let's uh kind of re Let's revamp. All right, so let's go to our 3D puzzle here, and let's create our 3D puzzle. Now, my job setup is still the same, 15 by 15, the size of my puzzle, three quarters of an inch thick. I'm working off the machine bed in the bottom left corner, okay? And then uh, now my clip art, right? Uh, we can, you know, uh, models that um, <clears throat> that you've acquired or purchased online or models that are within your clip art all of these cool things you can do and all that stuff um, you know it could be an animal could be a ship could be whatever you want this puzzle to be so let me look and let's see what we have under objects and people see if there's anything that I would want to make a puzzle of Let's see, what would we want to make a puzzle of uh, that would look pretty cool? Objects and people, plants and fruit. Plants and fruit. Yeah, let's bring in a model that I have. And let's go to Jigsaw Puzzle and grab this model right here. Now, this is a model of a bouquet of roses. Now, um, Todd Coates, I can't seem to find the laser cutting in Inkscape under extensions render. How do I install it? All right, great question. So, um, uh, Todd's question is, is, is uh, where do I find that extension? And so, let me get that for you. Stand by. There's a link, and I really don't want to plug this flash drive back in because he was a problem for me. If I crash, James, it's all on you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the seashell. Okay, somebody said the seashell. Now, I got roses, too. 
Uh, let's get off of this page and let's get back to our model while I'm pulling up that link because that's a great question. So the she shell. Well, I was going to use this bouquet of roses, but we could do that. Use the skull, Tippy says. We could do that too. All right, so stand by a moment. Let me make sure that I don't crash my system with this flash drive. I got to get these files off the flash drive at some point in time. And I'm going to do that right now. Don't you crash. Stand by. Please don't freeze up. <laughs> it's pretty bad when you're begging the, when you're begging the, uh, uh. oh no. Stand by. All right. When you bring in a third-party model, this happens to be a, uh, and we'll do the skull and all too. Uh, when you bring in a third-party model, you have to orientate it, orientate it. And so uh, I want a top orientation on this, which is what I got. I'm, I'm seeing the top here. But no, now notice that the size of it and everything. It's quite big, 65 inches by 65 inches. My board is 15 by 15. I'm going to go 14. Right, by 14 and three quarters, I'm gonna click apply. Okay. Now I'm gonna paste this link, James, because it's a weird one. Um, it's a strange one. Uh, the, the, the guy who created his link uh, didn't do a very uh, good job, should I say? Uh, and he's got a lot of Stupid characters in it. All right, so let's go in here. I'm gonna paste it right here, Buddy Row, in the little chat. There you go. All right, so now I've got my uh, rose size, rose bouquet size. Let's go ahead and kick uh, center that model on our board. Now, when you center, when you click center model, I want you to understand it centers that model. Not only does it center it left and right on the X and Y, but it also centers it on the zero plane in the material. And we don't want that. We want the model sitting at the top of the material. Okay. But now I don't want my model sitting completely at the top. There's, I, I just want to bring it up to the bottom of these petals, these petals, petals. So I'm going to slide this slide bar down. This slide bar means we're sliding our zero plane down, which is essentially pushing the model up. Okay. All right. All right. And the zero plane is the center of the board. So I want, I want to be slightly. Let me turn. I got. I got to look at it down the Y. That's the only way you're gonna see. It's got to look down at down the Y. So let me zoom in. And what that means is some of the material underneath is gonna end up getting milled or erased, basically. And all right, I believe I'm happy with that. So let's go ahead and. Yeah, I'm good with that. Ain't got time for that. All right, I'm gonna click discard uh, data below the zero plane and I'm gonna click okay. <clears throat> that discard data. Uh oh, am I frozen? Time out. Don't move. Do not blink.
Don't blink. <laughs> Let's get rid of that flash drive. I think I got a bad flash drive. All right, let's uh, let's see if I get caught up now <clears throat> with you guys. All right, so we've got our roses in here. Okay, now one big key thing. Okay, is and let, let's see if I uh, let's see if I'm moving. All right, let's see if I'm moving. I, th I believe I'm moving. I'm not sure. Oh, I'm sweating to death. It's hot down here, guys. I hate to complain about the heat um, while y'all are up there in the cool weather and stuff, but gum it, man. It's hot. It's like an oven. All right, so I believe we're back. Okay. Now, one of the big key things about this is that right now, if I let's get back into the Z view here, looking at this head on, okay? Right now, my puzzle or my model, should I say, there is no meat around this flower right here, right? And my puzzle is 15 inches by 15 inches. If I go to milling this, jump, 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 if I go to mill this and all, then I am, uh, I don't have any meat there, right? I don't have anything, uh, you know, uh, around there. So we have to, we have to add a zero plane, okay? Zero plane. Unless you want your puzzle to actually be like this, this shape type of thing, we got to do a zero plane. You still do the zero plane and do a profile cut, right? Still do a zero plane. So don't don't not do it. So we're gonna add a zero plane right here. This button, add zero plane. Okay, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna put wood around our model. Now we have to build that zero plane height up. So we're gonna go into the properties of the zero plane and we're going to give it some base height it's all about that base no i don't want to shh, copyright in front of me i can't say that <laughs> all right so we want to merge the two models together they're the zero plane and the model together okay and i want to bring this zero plane up to where it's just just under my this leaf right here just under these leaves right here so i want to bring it up ever so slightly let it regenerate oh too much I knew that was going to have to be. Let's do that. Okay. All right. So that'll be fine. All right. Now on my model, right now my model and everything is exceeding my three quarter of an inch depth and stuff, my three quarter of an inch, my model alone is 1.29 inches. So I wanna size this down a little bit, not much, I don't wanna to lose too much detail. Ooh, not that much. Okay. All right, so slightly down, uh, I need to be, let's go, let's go, uh, yeah, we'll go there. We're going to resize the whole thing, but let's go back to our zero plane. I got to lower it down some. Z plane, zero plane, not Z plane. 
Uh, and I want to lower that shape height down some. There we go. Perfect. All right. Now, if we go over to create my tool path on this model, we'll do the skull and the shell too. But if we go to create the tool path on this model, right now my model height on my three-quarter inch board, I've got an error. Okay, my model's one inch thick exactly and everything. So I need to come in here and I'm using a three-quarter inch board, so I'm going to go 0.73 inches. I don't want to go the full three-quarters because I want to mill some wood off of it. It's because I don't want any flat spots in the top of my roses. Yeah, almost 90 today in Florida. Harry's about right there. I mean, it's brutal. All right, so now I've got my material, is, or my model is 0.73. My, mod, my material is 3 quarters of an inch. It's going to leave this 20 thousandths of an inch skin that it's going to get milled away. That's going to eliminate any possibility of a flat spot in the top of my model. Okay, so we've got that model there. All right. So now, let's come in and uh, turn that model off. I'll just turn that level off. And I'm going to create a new level. And we're going to go into our clip art. And we're going to go to the uh, uh, well, oh, objects and people. And someone said the skull, someone said the seashell. Let's do the skull. Let's see here. We might have to do the skull in the seashell. I don't know how that would be about a puzzle as a puzzle. We'd have to make that sucker big, right? Oh. <laughs> that could be an interesting 3D puzzle never know um, they'd be like oh man I'm missing a piece man I'm missing a piece this tooth is missing I can't figure out where that piece went to <laughs> all right so now same thing with if we were doing this skull here right we have to have a zero plane around this we got to have some meat around this our puzzles 15 inches by 15 inches so we're gonna go into our modeling tab and we're gonna add that zero plane all right, and then that zero plane, we've got to give some height to it. We want to merge the zero plane. We want to merge the zero plane with the skull, and then we've got to build up the base height. Okay. All right, whatever it may be. And then, of course, you can add other elements. We could add text to this. We could laser grave, blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever it may be. <clears throat> All right. So let's uh, go to our skull here. And I'm going to reduce his shape height slightly. I don't have to, but I'm going to. And uh, let's go one inch. Okay, and then I'm going to go into my material setup here with that skull and zero plane. I've got an error because now my whole model is one inch thick. I've got to set that size. I'm going to size it down to 0.73. Once again, rinse and repeat kind of stuff type of deal, you know. Okay. And then I'm going to come in and, uh, you know, calculate the toolpath. So we do a rough, uh, on this, I wouldn't do a, there, there, uh, let's see, would I do a rough cut? There's really not, a, it's not that big of a material to rough cut. There's not a whole lot, but the eyes and all. So let's do a rough cut, 3D rough cut. We're going to use the entire material as the boundary. I'm going to use my quarter inch end mill. I'm going to leave a small allowance for the finish bit to clean up, and I'm going to raster along my x-axis. I'm going to cut with the grain. So we're going to go ahead and calculate this toolpath and shoot. I, I, want to, I want to shorten up the toolpath a bit. I don't need a profile cut, so we're going to do none on the profile cut. This is a rough cut, so I don't need a profile. 
and down the rock. Okay, so we're gonna preview that uh, selected toolpath. All right, let's turn our color off for some reason. All right, so we got our rough cut. And now let's go ahead and let's do our finish cut. Now for the finish cut, there's not a whole lot of detail in this particular one, right? So I'd use an eighth inch ball nose end mill for it and all. But why, why, why? Uh, why would I want my eighth inch ball nose end mill to do all of this flat work, right? Why would I want it to do all that flat work? That would just be ridiculously long. I want my eighth inch ball nose end mill to focus focus on my 3d model here okay all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a minute i'm going to optimize this cut a little bit by drawing a rectangle around my perimeter oops try that again all right, I'm going to offset that rectangle ever so slightly past my uh, board so my bit will do all the edges nice and clean. And then on my skull here, my skull, I'm going to create a vector boundary on the selected component. Okay, what that's going to do is going to create my vector boundary. Now I can come in and do a 2D toolpath like a pocket cut, a pocket cut. To a depth. Now, what depth do I cut it, Laney? I don't know what depth to cut it to. Well, my zero plane, the top of my zero plane is 0.2738. Laney, how'd you get that number? Look at the very bottom right of the screen. Z, 0.2738. All right. 0.2738. That's my model Z plane. Another way of finding that is if we come over here to the set and we look at our material, right? Well, it's hard to tell where that particular spot is, right? Because we don't have it. In a regular model, it's easy to do. So just move your mouse over here and look at your model. So 0.2738, that's my magic number, okay? All right. Now, 0.2738. Now, I want to show you something very important. My, the math, okay, 0.2738, that's where my cut is, okay? The top of my skull here is a little over three quarter, you know, 0 0.72, 0 0.73, right? So 0.73, it's coming down and stuff and everything, and it's cutting to 0.2738. That's the finish. So what's the difference between the top and that cut depth? What's the math difference? Well... We gotta figure out how deep that cut is. If I come in here and create a pocket toolpath to 0.2728, because that's what it's showing on my screen, right here, 0.2738, I'm sorry, 0.2738. And I calculate that with my quarter inch end mill, or my half inch end mill, right? Let's do a quarter of an inch, but calculate that, right? I can preview that cut and stuff and nothing right all right let's see what happens when i create my finish cut my finish cut i don't want any offset right now i'm going to use my eighth inch ball nose end mill and i'm just going to do the selected vectors as the boundary and i'm only going to use the selected vectors of the skull now i do want my bit to go past that selected vector by a small amount because my bit can only get so far into these cuts, my big end mill, when it's doing the pocket. So I'm gonna let it go past by about an eighth of an inch. It's my boundary offset for that finish cut. I'm gonna calculate that toolpath. Now what's gonna happen is, is because I my Z says you know, 0 0.028 and everything, and I cut that pocket to that deep, well the, the pocket didn't cut, right? Nothing, nothing was removed. So you're gonna see when I preview this cut that I'm gonna have this kind of cavity 
around the skull because my seaplane wasn't cut. My, my, my pocket depth wasn't low enough. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, so we got the weather report from everybody and all that, but in the meantime, any questions? All right, let's preview this cut. Okay, so you see the cavity that's around my skull. Now, if I was working off the top of the material and I put my mouse over my Z plane, it's going to show me, you know, my, uh, it would show me my Z depth, right? My, my Z plane depth and all, and I could set my pocket cut for that deep type of deal. But it, since I'm working off the bottom of the material and everything, and since everything is kind of backwards and all, and I said there was no, you know, the software is going to do all the math and everything for you. But there's one cut when working with a 3D model that we do have to do the math. And the math is very simple. So if I come back into that pocket cut, that I'm going to be, you know, and this is my magic number here, 0 0.2738. Well, I need to type in T for the thickness of my material minus 0 0.2738. Two seven three eight that number and it equals okay now I'm going to calculate that toolpath I'm going to preview that toolpath and it should clean up my cavity okay so we had to do math and T the software knows how thick my material is at three quarters my Z plane, 0.2738, when I move the mouse over here, I just have to subtract that from my thickness so I can create my cut depth in that pocket cut to bring it down to the bottom of that model. Okay? So that would be the one time that I have to do math and I have to work backwards a little bit because I'm working off the bottom of the material. All right? So Todd asked the question, where is that tool on the modeling tab that had the car on it? The tool in the modeling tab that had the car on it. Oh, the orientate model page. There is no tool for that, Todd. Anytime you import a third party file, a third party model file, um, that will, that's the orientate model screen. And that automatically comes up uh, when we uh, bring a model in. And there is no tool to re bring it back to reorientate the model type of deal. Um, we can, you know, uh, there is no tool, you know, for orientate type of deal and, and all that. You would just delete the model and re-bring it back in if you want to see that screen again. All right. So now we'd have a very cool, you know, skull puzzle piece, blah, blah, blah. All right. So we got skulls, we got roses, we got all kinds of stuff. All right. Now, let's turn off this level. And for the last time, then we're going to call it a night. Insert a new level. <clears throat> and on that new level, let's go into our clip art. And somebody said the seashell. Where's the seashell? It's 
somebody saw a seashell, what would that be under? Plants and fruit? What was I in that I would see a seashell? Was that decorative? Let's see here. Let's scroll down here. No. Objects and people. All right. Somebody had too many shots of something. Where, 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 where? Panels and shields or panels and shields. Plants and fruit or plants and fruit. Where did somebody see a seashell? <laughs> All right. We're going to call that a day, guys. Uh, I think um, I think you kind of understand uh, where we're going to be. But let's 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 just as a thing, let's go back to our roses, right? We never really created the toolpath for the roses, right? So let's come in and let's turn our roses back on. So with our roses, I think our roses are back on. There we go. All right. So we're going to do a rough cut, 3D rough cut. Okay. Quarter inch end mill. We're going to, um, we're going to use the model as the boundary, right? Why? As since my pocket cut is going to do all this flat area, why why should the end mill just do the same area right so we're going to use the uh model as the boundary in this case right or the selected vectors in this case and let's let's turn off the skull vector let's get rid of that let's select on our model and create a vector boundary around it bam okay and I've got some vector boundaries on the inside and stuff too. It's not, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll go away. Um, <clears throat> and uh, let's turn those off. U for ungroup. Hold down the shift key, turn off the outside border, hit the delete key to delete those inside items and uh, reselect that outside border. All right, once again, here we go. We're gonna do a, a pocket cut, pocket cut. Let's make sure, let's make sure my model set up still correctly. It is 0.73, all that wonderful jazz. Pocket cut, and now again, we need to know how deep our cut is. All right, so once again, 0.1643. You see where I put my mouse here? 0.1643, you see that Z number at the bottom? Okay, cut depth is going to be T for thickness minus 0.1643. All right, equals. All right, all right. It's going to be my cut depth. Okay, now, because I do need to cut to that deep, my, my, my model literally is real thin, right? After all those roses are cut all the way down, it's a super thin backer. But my puzzle. All right, so quarter inch end mill, we're gonna calculate that toolpath. Let's, uh, we can do that in, um, how, how deep a pass? I'm taking an eighth of an inch pass. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate that. All right, now I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna preview that yet. I'm not gonna preview that cut yet, okay? The 3D rough cut, 3D rough cut. Model is the boundary. I don't need the 3D rough cut to go beyond the boundary, so we're going to stick with zero and calculate. Okay. All right. Now, you see what happened is I used the model as a boundary and it did the whole thing. The zero plane is a model, guys. The zero plane is a model. So this is why we use the selected vector as a boundary. So turn this off and use your selected vector as the boundary. Don't, don't think that you're using the model as the boundary and you're going to just get the roses because the zero plane, that board that we brought in and gave shape and all, that's a model too. So it's going to do the whole thing. So selected vectors is what we want. 
I'm not going to let it go again. No, no, no offset. None of that stuff. We're going to calculate. I just wanted to, you to get that clear. All right. So my rough cut, right? You know, it's going to go through and it's going to rough cut the roses. Right now at the same time, it's using the quarter inch bit. So I'm going to be running the pocket cut with it as well. So it'll do the rough cut. Then it's going to come back and do the pocket cut. Um, oops. Um, the pocket cut. So those two, that's one toolpath file. That quarter inch bit is going to do everything. It's going to do the pocket and the rough cut. Okay. You know, all that wonderful jazz. Right? All right. Okay. Now my 3D finish cut. Again, the selected vector as the boundary. Oh, my dog's telling me it's time to go outside. But I have to let that bit go past the boundary sum. And let's let's do it with a zero offset so you can understand why we let it go past. Let's go ahead and calculate this. Okay, give it a second to calculate, and then um, Todd has the seashell. <laughs> Todd's got the seashell. I don't have the seashell. So um, Todd's like, I'm not going nuts, man. I know it's in there. I saw it, but uh, no. Uh, so uh, same process, Todd. I just don't have the seashell. <laughs> All right. You guys uh, get some models that we don't as demonstrators, demonstrators and stuff. Okay, so I'm going to preview this, the, the, the rough cut, okay? And we're just using the model as the boundary. And so what that means is, is the bit is being stopped by the boundary line, right? So it's not allowing the bit to go over the edges of that line and everything. So let's let it let's let it uh, calculate or let it preview. All right. Now if we look at this, okay? It did the model as the boundary, right? But it didn't it didn't, you know, my quarter inch pocket cut, there's certain areas that it couldn't get up into and everything and, and all and my boundary line my boundary line of my bit didn't let my my ball nose finish bit go over and do the nice edges right to clean them up and stuff so we got to kind of meet meet up between that pocket cut that was kind of a straight cut you know and the model cut which is kind of a contoured cut if you will so we got to let that finish go past the selected vector, and I usually go about the diameter of the bit, but if I were using a half inch end mill for the pocket cut instead of a quarter, my half inch would definitely not be able to get up into some of those nooks and crannies. So I may have to allow that allowance to that ball nose bit to go out further to kind of match things up. So let's go ahead and let it go past the boundary line. I'm gonna go an eighth of an inch in this case. Uh, just the diameter of my bit. We're going to calculate that toolpath again so we can clean up those edges. So almost there. Let it calculate out. Uh, well, let's calculate. I'm going to have another sip of my Mountain Dew. And then we're going to call it a night, guys. This should finish up in just a minute. Uh, so if you have any questions, we're only going to stay till 10. It's 9.58. So... Uh, and you're probably hearing this about the time 10 o'clock because there is a delay between our screens of a few minutes. But go ahead and pop any questions you have in the, on the screen now so we can get through them. All right. So now we can even see in the toolpath, if we zoom in, we can even see in the toolpath that the tool is now allowed to contour over. It's now allowed to contour over and go out and kind of meet up where that pocket cut is so it can kind of clean up those cuts and stuff. So we want to have that, uh, that offset. We want to let that bit go over. 
So we're going to go ahead, and this, this applies in a lot of cases to any model. When you're optimizing the toolpath, when you're optimizing the toolpath and you're using, and you have flat regions, and you're going to use a pocket cut to do those flat regions, okay? Uh, and then you're going to just have the modeling cut focus on the model, then that modeling cut needs to kind of that model cut, if you're going to use the selected vector, it needs to meet up with the pocket cut, right? It needs to be able to kind of clean things up and stuff. And so let that ball nose bit offset out past the line so it kind of blend, so it can blend. Okay. 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 All right, so right now, uh, that's it. That's it for this. Try some. Try making some puzzles. Uh, try a uh, try a, a V card puzzle. If you got the laser engraver, try a laser engraver puzzle. See what that looks like. Uh, but definitely, 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 if you ever get the opportunity, do a 3D puzzle. They're fun, creative, and it's really neat to put them together. You know what I mean? So. Uh, I'm going to hang tight for a second. Uh, we're going to see if we can answer some questions. And uh, go, because there is a delay. You're not even hearing me ask you to ask questions right now um, until like a few minutes after I say it. You're welcome, Jeff. Or Jim, not Jeff. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. You're welcome, Jim. But... Gives you some ideas, right? Something cool and creative. Uh, you can make them complicated puzzles with more pieces. You can make them fairly simple puzzles, right? For kids and stuff like that. You can do all kinds of fun stuff. And, uh, you know, you can do, uh, you know, uh, uh, game type puzzles, you know, where um, uh, cartoon cartoon type puzzles you know where it's cartoon characters for kids and all that stuff and you know or teddy bears right a teddy bear puzzle right type of thing you know what i mean you know this the roses i don't know if a kid would enjoy putting together a rose puddle puzzle you know what i mean the skull puzzle a little boy might like that you know cool yeah i'm put together a skull puzzle the roses little girl might like that one but you know generally not right but you put a you put a Put a cartoon character on there or something or something fun. It'd be a cool puzzle. All right. All right. I'm not. Now, you guys, by this time, you should have already heard me ask if you have any questions, type here. So I don't see any uh, coming across. And um, that means we're going to go ahead and call this a night. So we'll say goodbye. Until next time, see you soon. Link's on its way, keys. Good, Greg. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad the wheels are turning and stuff. Uh, Jim, same thing. You know, got a bunch of ideas. Um, Ronnie, thank you. I appreciate that. I hope you guys really have some fun with this. And, you know, I know the projects, you know, we're going to do, you know, different things from time to time. I know we, we may start out rough. We may crash and all that. But I'm glad we were able to get through this and on. I'm glad you guys hung out with me and stuff. Uh, very cool. And um, maybe I hope I'm going to be able to kind of edit the front of this video or whatever and uh, uh, kind of uh, so I'm not people that want to view it or not view on a blank screen or what have you. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, no, I hope uh, I hope you all enjoyed it and um, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you again. I say it a couple of times all the time, but until next time. 
Have a great day. I want to thank you for joining us tonight on Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. If you're watching Spindle TV on YouTube, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. You can find out more information about our training and products by visiting us at www.digitalwoodcarver.com.